Don't get me wrong, I like full-size headphones and headsets. Actually, I'm even a bit of an audiophile snob if I'm totally honest. I'm normally using these open-back planar magnetic headphones for both gaming and listening to music and I absolutely love them. They're super comfy and the sound is just amazing. They're also really good for pinpointing footsteps and actually hearing where your opponents are in-game. In the summer though, after a long gaming session, my ears are pretty much cooked. These large and soft ear pads sure are comfy, but ventilation is a different story. So yeah, what's the alternative? Quit gaming in the summer, going outside and engaging in physical activity? Yeah. Well, so what about gaming with IEMs? I mean, it's pretty hard to get hot ears with earphones like these that are super lightweight and just sit in your ear canal. But these are much worse than proper full-size headphones or headsets, right? Or aren't they? Well, IEMs like these two that I have here pretty much wipe the floor with pretty much any gaming headset and even sound better than many full-size grown-up audiophile headphones. Okay, to be fair, each of these cost about a thousand dollars. So yeah, they better should be good. But I'm definitely not saying that you need to spend that much on IEM to get one that's better than a typical gaming headset. Not at all. I've been into the IEM hobby for like a decade now. And I have to say that nowadays there are quite a few affordable IEMs that are seriously good. One of them is the KZ ZS10 Pro, which definitely got a lot of hype. And for less than 50 bucks, it's indeed pretty good value. It's got a nice bass and treble boost, which is a sound signature that a lot of people like. These are my own frequency response measurements, by the way, and they are IEC 6318-4 compliant, in case you were wondering. Yes, I'm an audio nerd. Anyways, for my taste, the lower treble of the ZS10 Pro is a bit too pronounced, making it sound quite airy, but also a bit shouty and fatiguing. But still, in terms of the overall sound quality, it wipes the floor with your typical full-size gaming headset. Though the ZS10 Pro isn't the very best for competitive gaming. It's good, but the sound signature is a bit too bass heavy, which might sound good at first, but it's certainly not optimal for competitive gaming. Which, by the way, is a problem that many dedicated gaming headsets suffer from as well. I believe that a more neutral sound signature makes footsteps much easier to hear through gun noise and explosions and that kind of stuff. I had quite a few situations where a lot was going on, like multiple enemies up close shooting at the same time, making it hard to hear directional cues through the boosted bass. That deep bass rumble sure can sound great with music and stuff, but it also kinda overshadows directional cues in FPS games. I have much more confidence gaming with something like this. It's the Moondrop Area Snow, which is a pretty neutral sounding IEM. I have this and the KZ plugged into an amp that has two identical headphone outputs so that I can seamlessly switch between IEMs while gaming, making it pretty easy to compare them back to back. And switching from something bass heavy to the area snow can honestly feel quite strange at first. A more neutral sound signature like this can almost sound thin and sharp in the beginning, but I find it so much easier to actually hear where the opponents are coming from. If you're not into competitive FPS and are gaming for the immersive experience, then yeah, something with a bit more bass might sound better to your ears. For the competitive edge though, I definitely recommend trying out something like the Area Snow, which is a more neutral IEM. A less bass heavy sound signature might take some time to get used to, but I think it's well worth it. If you don't want to spend $100 right away, there's also the Moondrop Chew. Its sound signature is very similar to the Area Snow and it's only 20 bucks. If you want to tip your toes into the world of gaming with more neutral sounding IEMs, I can't recommend the Moondrop Chew enough. Now, one of the biggest issues I have with using IEMs for gaming is the noise isolation. I mean, I get it. A good noise isolation is awesome when you're sitting in a loud environment or just want to listen to your favorite music on a train or something. But for gaming, I don't know about you, but I'm sitting in a fairly quiet room and the loudest noise probably is me yelling at my teammates. And here the noise isolation becomes an issue. With the noise isolating IEM blocking the ear canals, talking at a normal volume is 
difficult. Not being able hearing yourself while telling your teammates what to do will result in you yelling at your screen eventually. So what's the solution? Well, open back IEMs are a thing, but they're not very common at all. So for close back IEMs and also close back headphones, there's a thing called side tone. Side tone takes your mic input and mixes it back into your ears so that you can hear yourself and get a guess of how loud you actually are. Windows has an option that's called listen to this device built in, but the latency is just horrible, making this pretty much unusable. Fortunately, there are headphone decks and amps that come with a much better implementation of this feature. The EPOS GSX-1000 is a dedicated gaming-centric deck and it comes with a side tone functionality that adds almost no perceivable latency to the side tone. So as a result, the effect is pretty convincing and it actually does somewhat resemble gaming with open back headphones and definitely keeps me from screaming at my monitor. Now, there are also various other decks that support this feature, some of them being much more affordable than the GSX-1000. EPOS entry-level deck, for instance, the GSX-300, has the same feature as well, though it lacks the handy toggle button for quickly turning the side tone on and off, meaning you'd have to open up the control software for that. Just like with the super affordable Creative Sound Blaster G3. Creative like to call this feature mic monitoring instead of side tone, but this essentially is the same thing and it works just as good as with the EPOS devices. Though for some strange reason, Creative's more higher-end model, the Sound Blaster X4, has a pretty lackluster side tone implementation. Even with the mic monitoring cranked up to 100%, it's just way too soft and doesn't mix in enough of the microphone's recording. Not sure why it's actually worse than with Creative's low-end model, but this goes to show that the quality of this feature can vary between different devices. So my favorite in terms of what gives you the most bang for the buck of the interfaces that I've tested is the EPOS GSX-300. I much prefer this over the Sound Blaster G3, especially because of the way lower output impedance, which in case you didn't know is a pretty important spec for using this with IEMs. I measured about 5 ohms for the GSX-300, which ideally would be below 1 ohm, but 5 ohms are still low enough for most IEMs out there. So yeah, for about 70 bucks, I can actually recommend this for an IEM gaming setup. However, there's a potential problem we haven't really considered yet. Unlike a typical gaming headset, not every IEM has a mic. And those that do usually come with these cheap little inline microphones, which don't really sound great and pick up a lot of echo and keyboard noise. An external mic setup like this always is an option and will of course give you the best audio quality. But unless you're a streamer or so, a dedicated mic setup like this might be a bit overkill. It's also an additional piece of gear on the desk, which adds more cable clutter. And I personally think my setup just looks better and the cleanest without a mic hanging from the side. So I was really happy when I found this. Yes, it's an IEM with a boom mic. I didn't really know that this was a thing, but apparently it is. It's made by Nismo and it comes in two different versions, each with a slightly different sound signature. The boom mic even is detachable, so that you can take the IEM with you outside and listen to music or something. And it plugs back into the left earpiece if you want your teammates to hear you better. And yeah, it actually works. It's not the best quality mic in the world, but just the fact that it's much closer to the mouth helps a great deal with the audio quality. It picks up much less keyboard and mouse clicks, and as the mic is close to the mouth, the audio doesn't need as much amplification, resulting in a cleaner signal. This is what the inline microphone sounds like. And this is the boom microphone. So. Is this IEM combined with a deck like this the ultimate IEM gaming setup? Well, it's super comfortable on hot days, so that's a mission accomplished in that regard. I also like that I'm actually hearing myself when I talk, and the IEM itself is super lightweight and it doesn't have a headband that destroys my hair. But as much as I enjoy the comfort of this setup, I really wish these IEMs with a boom mic were available as a more high-end kind of version. I mean, what Nismo are offering generally is a good value product. I can especially recommend the cheaper 2-driver version, which can be had for just $30.
But yeah, just like so many full-size gaming headsets, it's pretty base heavy, which is not optimal for competitive gaming. I really wish there was something like this, but with at least the audio quality and sound signature of the area snow. Even better if this was open back, so that using Cytone wouldn't be necessary anymore. But yeah, until then, I at least have found a nice audio setup for hot days, but I'm totally willing to trade in some audio quality for not getting hot ears. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.